Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, getting together with Mary's Place because they are helping kids get kicks on their feet. Because, look, it's going to get colder, and all these kids in the Puget Sound that just don't have a lot of money, you know what I mean? Some of them are homeless, and Mary's Place helps them get get warm, and they're helping them get these shoes on their feet, and the kids get to pick out their own sneakers. It's awesome. Uh, shout out to Michelle R., donating 50 bucks. Uh, Alicia, or Alicia. That's a hundred dollars to kicks for kids, and then nice. of course we got to show a lot of love for Kevin, Jessica, and Tanya. <laughs> All of them members of the sixty nine crew. Yeah, sixty nine dollars. It's stupid, but it's more than fifty. Yes, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> so listen, when you can do something stupid and get yeah. more than fifty, and you're helping out kids, I mean, come well, you on. think that's like oh, I'm going to donate fifty bucks? You know what? For an extra $19, I get to be part of a very exclusive club. The 69 Crew. Yeah, whatever you can whatever you can do, we would greatly appreciate it because all the money does go to Puget Sound Kids. That's fantastic. And uh, they get to pick out their own shoes, and you get to feel good. That's how it works, man. Kicks for kids. Uh, I want to thank Mary's Place. You want to donate? Uh, you want to share on your social media? Please do that. Head to KISW.com today. Let's play B. It's Thursday! Release the Kraken! Oh yeah! Yeah, release that Kraken! I love how we have a, a day for a team that isn't going to play for at least another year. <laughs> yeah, for, there's another full season hey, before. As yeah. far as we're concerned, it's our team. We oh were, yeah! We believe we spearheaded the entire Kraken name campaign. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Yeah. We are the Kraken. Yeah, so that's just how it's going to be. We, You know what? We own them. Steve is we the backup own them. To, we hey, own Steve's them. the backup to the backup goalie. Jerry Bruckheimer that's announced that. I mean, yep. look. All right, I watch Jerry's movies, therefore I own the team. I feel like that's how it works. I know how to spell like wiki. I Do mean, you? That's, yeah. I can. <laughs> and let me tell you right now, that in itself is a true accomplishment. <laughs> it goes a long way. Let's get to our contestant yes, today. Yes, I do. Okay, I had to double check it. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> We've got TJ in Tacoma. TJ, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Can you spell like wiki? It's not easy. Can I? I yes. don't think so. <laughs> I'm well, with you, buddy. Steve has the advantage, but uh, this is not for this game. Steve, get out of here! <laughs> for those playing at home, TJ will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. TJ, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yep. In Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, what type of animal was Shere Khan? Uh, an ape? No. Uh... I don't pass. Oh. Who played Theodore Roosevelt in the Night at the Museum movies? Pass. Oh. Bruce Springsteen was given what nickname? The Boss? Yes. All right. How many quarters make up $20? 80? Yes. What famous sign would you find on California's Mount Lee? What famous sign? Yeah. I don't know. Pass. A six sided shape is called a what? Hexagon. Yes. How many books are there in a trilogy? Three. Yeah. In which century did the French Revolution take place? Uh, the 15th? No. 16th? No. 17th? No. In what country was Albert Einstein born? 
Germany? Yes. What year of the mid eighties was James Cameron James Cameron's film Aliens released? Eighty four, eighty five, eighty six. No, yeah, well, I Sorry. mean, Sorry, you did, you only got fir- one. Yep, the only the one guess, and that first guess was not correct. No, sorry. Sorry, TJ. Yep. One, two, three, yeah. four, five, correct. Actually, TJ, there's a lot that you should be sorry about. On well, he got questions. five. Don't shame him nah, too the much. one he should have got. Well, I know. There's a bunch of them he should have yeah, got. There's but a couple he should have got. He's going to kick himself about that mountain. Yeah, I thought a, I thought a couple of these were softballs, but yeah. maybe Steve won't get them But either. TJ was pleading, so Steve, you should just throw the game. TJ needs this win bad. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> well, Why does he need this one bad? We're not even giving away a prize. I don't yeah. know. Well, he just left, too. I guess he maybe, oh. maybe hurt his feelings. Yeah, you oh, shamed him, man. Yeah. On a cracking Thursday, you're going to make someone feel that way. That's how I am. You know what? They got to get cracking and they're out. Okay. Steve, are you ready? Release the Kraken. <laughs> In Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, what type of animal was Shere Khan? Oh, come on. Come Apparently, on. A giraffe. No. Gorilla? No. Monkey. No. Oh. Who played? Oh. No. Who played Theodore Roosevelt in the Night at the Museum movies? Oh, my God. Wilfred Brimley? No, that'd be... That would have been cool. I almost swore. Uh, wow. Uh, Take it easy over there, man. I'm going to go Ed O'Neill. No. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go Channing Tatum. No. Oh. All of those great. Bruce Springsteen was given what nickname? The Boss. Yes. Yeah. How many quarters make up 20 bucks? 800? No. 80? Yes. Nice. What famous sign would you find on California's Mount Lee? Hollywood. Yes. Woo. A six-sided shape is called a what? Decagon. No. Hexagon. Yes. yes. How many books are there in a trilogy? Three. Yes. In which century <laughs> did the French Revolution take place? 17th. No. 18th. Yes. Noise. In what country was Albert Einstein born? France. No. Italy. No. Germany. Yes. yes. Yeah. What year of the mid 80s was James Cameron's film Aliens released? Ooh. 84. No! Oh. Same guess as TJ, by the way, but yeah. not right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You win! Seven to five! That was closer than I expected. Yeah! That was a couple I thought that you should get, but no. You know what? This, uh, I'll tell you this. Ken Jennings has taught me how to do games of trivia. Oh. Yeah, because of the fact that certain questions you go, how the hell would I ever know the answer to that? Unless, of course, it's iconic like that Mount Lee. Yeah. I didn't know that was called Mount Lee, but what other sign would there be? No, if you said the Hollywood sign is located on what... Mountain, yeah. Mountain. I would just be like, you're you're crazy to ask that question. Yeah. And I would be, because why would you know that? And Ken Jennings right. taught me that. He said that, you know what, it's not about knowing everything. It's about knowing the context of the question and what yep. you would be expected to be able to answer. Jeez, man, you had to wait till Ken Jennings told you that? I've been preaching that since day one. Yeah, but Ken Sometimes Jennings... the answer is in the question. But see, <laughs> Ken Jennings, is, is he's a success at this stuff. And... The BJ Ball <laughs> Gag. <laughs> really? Yes! Shut up, BJ. Oh, he put it in his hotkeys. Somebody just asked me to hit that. So. <laughs> oh, did they really? <laughs> I've seen it. That was by request to the 206. So. Yeah, I noticed you highlighted it now. You don't really... Yes. You have two highlighted buttons on your stupid machine, and that's one of them. I got four highlighted. Uh, I got this one. The BJ Ball Gag. <laughs> shut up, BJ. I got this one. I don't know why. Yeah, you can oh, We need it sometimes. Yeah. I got this one. Release the Kraken. Oh, that's nice. important. Yeah, and the most important one. I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> you got to highlight the uh, fried chicken guy if you can. You got to get him in there. I know. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. It makes more sense. Uh, TJ did get the answer to James Cameron Aliens. It came out in 86. But he threw it out there too late, so yeah, he didn't get it. Sorry about that. Fortunately, it didn't matter because he won by two. Um, also, who played uh, Teddy Roosevelt in the Night at the Museum movies? Vicky knows this. Robin Williams. Yes. Oh. A lot of people forget that he mm-hmm. was Teddy. Yeah. I've watched that movie once. It was great, but I, I don't remember anything other than what Ben Stiller's in it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. good job. Uh, and then uh, who was Shere Khan? What kind of animal? Uh, Vicky knows this. Tiger. Yeah, it was the tiger. He's the big bad. Dude, I have to tell you, man. Uh, I Steve has not seen that movie. I will. Eventually, yeah. 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 Uh, the, the live action, I like the live action. There were two live actions done. There was a British what? version. Yeah. And wow. Andy, Andy Circus is in the British version. Gollum? And, uh, yeah. Gollum. Wow. Yeah. And it's actually in there. And, and Benedict Cumberbatch is Shere Khan. So Ooh. there's a lot of really like, but it's a little darker. 
Ooh. It's a little darker maybe than the American the, version. Maybe for the uh, younger children? Yeah. But or the, older children? But the fact that there are two live action, like, yeah. like apparently, I mean, they really go deep into, like, how bad man is. Oh, well, yeah, man yeah, is bad. So. Yeah, I mean, so as, as to why the animals, why Shere Khan is, is, is mean. They go in into because man kind of set fire to everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, congrats, Steve. You won. Good job, Stevie. You mentioned uh, Bruce Springsteen. I thought it was a cool little, little yeah. story about him that he recently, somebody gave him a guitar, a fan, and he wrote a whole record on that guitar. Yeah, I read about oh, that. It's just know, like, you I know, if it, I'm Bruce Springsteen, I mean, if I'm that fan, how awesome is that? That is pretty awesome. I heard he wrote a whole record but based on one guitar, but I didn't realize a fan gave it to him. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce, yeah. yeah. Well, now that makes more sense. I'm like, so what? He has a guitar and he made a song. Who, I remember I mean, reading a little bit about it where he was just like, yeah, I made a song in the bedroom. I made a song in the kitchen. Yes, yeah, he wrote his album on a guitar that was randomly gifted to him by a fan. Now, what if people hate this album? What are you going to do about that? I blame it on the fan. Yeah, blame yeah. the fan. Good call. <laughs> just name check him, give out his address, phone number, and say, take it up with him, man. Yeah, good. Uh, that's a very wow. good point. I wonder what kind of guitar it was like, that made it like... like it's of all things to give Bruce Springsteen a guitar. Like, I would kind of hope Bruce Springsteen would give me his guitar if I was a fan. Yeah. And, oh, it looks like an acoustic, right? Unless that's just a random picture. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that would be horrible if there's a story about a particular guitar and they just get a stock picture of him with any guitar. I just love that he's telling the story. A uh, fan walked out to him, gives him a guitar, and he said, quote, geez, you know, thanks. And I took a quick glance at it, and it looked like a nice guitar. So I jumped in the car with it. Yeah, that I guess it is weird to give a guitar player a guitar, figuring that he probably has real personal tastes about any kind of guitar he wants to use. You know, that I don't know if I would I would do that, but that's kind of cool that they did. Right, right. Yeah, he said that he was having he was in the middle of a creative rut, and then he grabbed that guitar, and then all these songs were just coming out of it in ten days. He's like, I was in Whoa. different rooms, and I wrote a song each day: one in the bedroom, one on the bar, one in the living room. I wonder if he went, wrote one in the crapper. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see where the we'll see where the album goes, and then we'll what know if, if he did. What if the kid, like, or the guy, or whoever it was, gave him the guitar, hoping he would sign it? He looked at it and just like took it. <laughs> no, oh, I hadn't even thought about awesome. that. <laughs> Rev, you may be onto something because it's so random to give him that, but to give That's it to what him I was to thinking, sign. Yeah, I've had that happen. Not that I took somebody. I remember somebody was a listener. He's showing me something, and it was something really cool. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool, man. Like, really? That? And I was like, you really want to give that to me? And he's like, oh, no, I was just showing it to you. I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. I'm so glad that I actually like said something and didn't just like be like, okay, I got to go and just walked off with this. Oh, thing. that would have been great if you did. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted your grandmother's ring. But Thank you. the way like, he handed it to me, it felt like he was like giving me a gift. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I was just so taken aback. And now I understand why I was so taken aback, because he would be an idiot to give it to me as yeah. a gift. That would be so cool if that person comes out and says, I, yeah, I really wanted him to sign the guitar, and now he made a whole album off of it. That's great. Well, if I'm the fan, I would be less annoyed with Bruce then at that point. Yeah, you'd be okay yeah. with it. I think I'd want some of the royalties. Oh, dude, I'd be that douche that just keeps playing that record anytime anyone comes over to the house. That record is always playing, and I'd find some way to drop the fact that I handed this guitar to Bruce Springsteen and he wrote this record <laughs> on my guitar. As much as I'd be irritated at you do for doing that, it's pretty epic. Right. You know, I mean, it's like, I really can't take that away from you because who's done that before? Nobody. You know? Yeah, right. I, yeah, so, I mean, as much as you'd be irritating the crap out of me, I'd give it to you. I'd have to tolerate the damn story. Oh, there's Steve and his guitar story again. Here's that story. Tell us more about your experience with yeah. Bruce Springsteen. It is time for listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. You can also text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts at 917 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. Where you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. It's pretty simple, man. You get to discuss what you want to discuss, but Steve has a rule. It's a simple rule, BJ. It's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we have to be gone. And then we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, someone just texted saying that you guys are talking about that weird burrito tube thing. Uh, does it, and how would anyone use it? Uh, for me, I have something that I use. It's the microwave omelet maker. Uh, what about you guys? Do you have anything weird that you actually do put to use? Ooh. 
Uh, well, that's a very interesting question. I have a, you know, I, I have one of those super can opener thing. You know, like they, one of those things where you can open any lid you want to open up. Oh, you have one? Does I it got work? One. Yeah, it does. They're amazing. I want to get one of those knives that you see that can cut a fish <laughs> and then cut a can and then a baseball glove. Oh, it's like the old Ginsu? Pretty much, but it's called something else now. I think it's like the Jim Sue or something. I, I, the Jim Sue, everybody. Well, it's a very creative, different we are, name. We are nothing like Gin Sue. Not at all. You're not the same company. I wouldn't want that knife. I would hurt myself with that. I just want to slice a giant fish with a knife. I want to see you slice a giant right? fish with a knife. And then put it in slow motion and just have that be on my phone at all times. I want to see Vicky have to run and get you Band-Aids after you try to slice a giant right. fish with a knife. That's true. Yeah. Oh, I just got something awesome for my birthday. It is one of those uh, devices that cuts the inside of like a beer can. It, it, it's because when we went to Chicago, yes. they made, I think it was with like that grapefruit beer or something. It was a truly, yeah, or if some, I remember, yeah. and then they poured more uh, alcohol in it. Yeah, and some Wait. other flavorings. What is yeah. this thing? So you can open up the can and, uh, so you don't cut yourself. It's just the top. It almost it takes, oh, it the, takes the, whole the top, top of off. the can off so yeah. it becomes a cup. Yes. Oh, whoa. And they did that at the bar in Chicago, Joe. I remember and I, we, and a few of us were there. But we, and Danny, you were there too, right? No, I was not there that year. Oh, you missed that yes. one. Oh, yeah. And they took the can off the top, uh, the top part, and then they shoved more vodka into this truly drink, and then put a br- uh, umbrella on it. That how, sounds amazing. It was the most manly the, thing I've ever had. How does the can <laughs> not cut you? I don't know. That's what I was thinking. But it didn't. I think. Whoa. The, I think the in de- the device. If I'm not sure, there's like a. It makes it. The lip. Dull it? Yeah, dull it or something like that. So it's not like as sharp or Science. something. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. All right. It is pretty And you legit. own one of these, Vicky? Yes. I was gifted this for my birthday, and I got to use it, and it works. Oh, yeah. That's the place. The Happy Camper in Chicago. Yes. Boy, oh. you could do that with, like, cans of uh, soda now, right? Mm-hmm. And throw some alcohol in your cans of soda. Hell, yeah. You can do whatever you want. If Whatever. it's open, you can put alcohol in it. Just think. Rather can than beans. Me, rather than me having to go find a cup, I could just drink out of the can. You yep. are saving the environment, sir. Ooh. Am I? Yes. Because the can is still kind of, you but know. But you're not wasting water to wash the cup. Oh, all right. You got me there. Okay. I win. She wins that The one. thing is pretty cool, though. I, yeah, that, I, I would like that as well. For me, I, I don't have it, but I'm, I'm, I was just talking to my wife two nights ago about it because we were having sushi. And I love, like, an avocado roll. Like, I wouldn't want to do sushi myself with, like, raw fish. I don't want to mess with that. Because you hear, like, there's a certain wave and there's this and there's that. And I don't really want, like, you know. Well, you don't want to get botulism. I want, yeah, I don't want Willie poisoning. the Worm or oh, really? Timmy the Tapeworm hanging out with me or something like that. I don't that. know. I feel like you're really good at making stuff. But making an avocado roll, that seems very safe. True. Because it's just avocado and rice and yes. seaweed. What I could want, go wrong? I want to get one of those uh, sushi guns. The ones that Ooh. look like like the cock gun. The sushi bazooka. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. All right. just, I want one too. You just oh. load it up with the rice. Okay. And whatever it is you want in it. And then like well, you that, close uh, the gun. That mm-hmm. looks like that. It also could be used as a flashlight. Well, I mean, BJ, not everything is sexual. I mean, it's, at one point are you going to grow up? Yeah, that's a good point. You're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry to disappoint talk you. talk like adults. And yeah. Just go down job, the though. road. Of, yeah, the Suzuki or whatever it is. Suzuki. <laughs> yeah. I want this. There you go. And just get a bunch of <laughs> avocado. I can have like an avocado roll every day. That is cool. It looks very simple to do. Yeah. <laughs> just smush it together. And then, what, and then what? Oh, and then, and oh, you got the oh, she looks like she's I having a good time doing it, too. Bro. Yeah, and you just All poop, right. poop it out and then uh, <laughs> poop it out, huh? Can you uh, not? Glad, I mean, glad we're having a good adult conversation about it. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. no. That's yeah, being pooped out. Yeah, there it is. It's pretty awesome, dude. It looks like a Play Doh Fun Factory situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She says it feels weird, but she's having a good time doing it. And then she's working the fish into it. Oh, you don't trust the fish yet. Well, I wouldn't want to do it that way. It's more just for like a little fun thing. You know, like I can just have like a little roll and I can take finger food as I'm driving. It's a little sushi roll. I mean, that is great for a party. Yeah. You know, I mean, I never had somebody give me, you know, the homemade sushi at a party. So he says, I have one of those drain snakes that you see on TV. I love oh. that aisle at Walmart. Yeah. The person says, those knives you're talking about, they suck. I was excited to get a set, and they just are not good. Oh, you mean something we bought off the internet doesn't work? <laughs> One person says, I have the 12-inch version of those knives, and I use them like a machete to cut down blackberry bushes. Oh, so whoa. So it depends on which knife you got. Okay, so maybe somebody just got the dull set. Nice. Danny, you got anything that's weird? No. I feel okay. like this is like the As Seen on TV segment. Yeah. yeah. Show. I can't yeah. think of anything that I've bought off TV. Nothing. Uh, I always wanted those. When I was a kid, I used to watch infomercials all the time, and I either wanted the slap chop or the. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, 
Yeah, you, yeah, or the uh, the bags where you would just put them in the microwave and it would make it like a rotisserie chicken. Yes, I, I don't know what they were called, but I just watched those like religiously when I was a child, and I never got them. Yeah, Rev, you got some? Christmas is just around the corner. We yeah, just right. talked to your lady about this. Slap chop, <laughs> slap chop. Your, your man wants a slap chop. <laughs> don't Urban Dictionary. It. <laughs> I don't have this, but uh, the PLP has this, and I actually want one really badly. It's a salt shotgun for flies. Oh yeah. So you the pack- assault rifle? Yes, and you uh, you put in salt, and then it will safely <laughs> destroy flies in your house. It'll safely kill a fly. Yes. And then what Safely happens to for the me. salt pellets? The Where do they go? They just they melt? What happens yeah, to Yeah, they just things? go all over the place. Oh, that's fancy. So they just have salt on just the a, floor. It's just a little bit. Okay. It'll make your feet taste better. Probably. Okay. Things the, are super cool. Bug of salt. You know, we actually need that because... Bug of salt. Lulu is... The minute she sees a fly in the house, she just starts shaking. Like, she is oh, legit yeah. afraid of a fly. <laughs> really? Yes. And and we'll be that way and be weird. Like, she'll, like, go upstairs and she won't hang out with us if the fly's in the in the living room. Like, the minute she sees a fly, it's, like, anxiety. So city. that's the secret. Bring a fly to my I'm house. I'm going to bring a fly to your house when I come visit Lulu. If she runs upstairs and leaves me alone, that's oh, fantastic. Like, she, you, you can just dress up like a fly. Wow. I, sh- I should. It's so it's so weird, man. Or bring a picture of Jeff Goldblum, one of the two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything else? Fly. Not a problem. Is that weird? I, I mean, that's really bizarre. That, that that I don't think I've ever heard of a dog trip out over a fly before. You know, I think you wouldn't hurt a fly. She's afraid of a fly. Yeah. That's so. If I had this gun, man, she would be stoked. Yeah, I'm sure that would not make her afraid. You're shooting salt everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah. She'd actually probably <laughs> love that because yeah, she got to go around the salt. And yeah. you don't have a baby or something that could maybe be part of the collateral damage as the salt goes flying I'm around. Not gonna, I'm not going to. If the flies on my child's face, I'm not going to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, that well, probably remember your brother punched safe. you in the face because you had a bee. I feel like it runs in the family that you will do whatever <laughs> means necessary to get rid of the insect near your face. All right. You pick the topic, you guide the show. It's listeners on the loose, 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. More of your calls and texts at 934 on the Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on the Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose, 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Clyde, all the way up there in Alaska. Clyde, Hello. you are on the Rock. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, How you Clyde. Doing? You're listening on uh, Radio.com, the app, or online? Yep, that's what I'm doing. I, I listen every single day. I appreciate you guys so much. Oh, um, how, how'd you find out about us, or are you originally from here and now living up there? Yeah, I'm from Seattle. I grew up there. I've been listening since I was in high school. I'm nice. 38 now, so Dang. I had to bring you with me. What are you doing up there in Alaska, buddy? Well, uh, I'm a foreman for the city of Bethel, which, if you Google that, it's in the middle of nowhere. Literally, we're off the road system. Wow. Um, all the water out here for houses and homes are, is delivered by truck. That's what I do. Huh. You deliver what? Like, that's the only way they get water, so you just must deliver just these ridiculously big-sized gallons of drums of, of water, and that's how they get it? Yeah. It's, uh, well, we run straight trucks with 3,400-gallon water tanks. And then we also have sewer trucks. We're very remote. We're way off the grid. The only way here is by airplane. Whoa. So, uh, what yeah, about? I thought you might want to know that, that. Even out here, we still listen. Dang. So you got internet out there, so that works. Yeah. Well, I mean, we get internet, but it's not 5G. I think uh, it says H plus, uh, whatever service that is. Huh. I have no idea. Do I you got, like, <laughs> restaurants and stuff? Like, or is it just solely just homes? Uh, yeah. We've got, actually, we have a lot of restaurants for some reason, and they all kind of serve the same thing. Uh, three Oops. gas stations, we have two grocery stores, and not one single stoplight. Oh, wow. So if you want to go to like a, I don't know, like a Walmart, a Costco kind of, I don't know if they're up, I mean, how far do you got to go to get to, a, I guess, a, a big store? Well, you got to jump on a, on a 747. We have uh, three flights a day. Well, we did before COVID. Now it's one flight a day, and... Then you fly 400 miles, and then you rent a car, and then you can go to Walmart. Man, if you forget something wow. at Walmart, like, did you get the toilet paper? I'm like, no. All right, I'll be back in <laughs> seven hours. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> Pretty, yeah. That's crazy. I think about it, Steve. Like, you know, I mean, just like it, it, he can't get to a Walmart. It's like it's like a plane ride away. I mean, that's something we just take for granted. But you mentioned that oh, you, yeah. you have a few restaurants, and they all serve the same thing. What's the, what's the thing that they typically serve? 
burgers and Korean food. Huh. Burgers and Korean food. No McDonald's, no Burger King, no Taco Time, none of that. But we do have one Subway, uh, so that's our go-to there. Isn't that crazy? The Subway was the one that made it up there out of all the fast food chains. Do you like the meatball yeah, sub? there's no such thing as a $5 foot long. I promise you that. Uh, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like 12 bucks. Like gas is like over seven dollars a gallon. Oh, milk is like six dollars. A loaf of bread, like that ninety nine percent or ninety nine cent white bread you can get for eighty nine. So it's like four bucks here. So Clyde, do you have like a four dollar store instead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Clyde, help me out here because I can't imagine that the work is going to be able to pay you tons of money. Or am I wrong about that? And at least you know the work around there will pay for those big prices. Well, that's the trick, right? So out here we make pretty good money, but. You know, like to rent a one bedroom house, you're paying $1,500 a month. So it's super expensive. One bag of groceries is almost 100, 100 bucks here. Oh, man. So to kind of like figure out internet ordering and kind of get good at that stuff to survive. So what about like Amazon? It's like, well, tell us about your weird land of Alaska. But can you get, uh, <laughs> can you get like Amazon and Amazon Prime? Can stuff get delivered there? Yeah. So our post office is super busy. We don't have like mail delivery like we do back home. Uh, so we all just go to this post office, and it's just nothing but Amazon. It's Amazon everywhere. Yeah. Oh, so that's where they go. They won't deliver to your homes. They'll just deliver to your post office. Everyone's got a P.O. box. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Place isn't big enough, I guess. Wow, man. And, Interesting. And do you like it up there? So you got all that going on. What do you love about being up there? Oh, man, this place is beautiful. So, you know, wintertime's coming up one of my favorite seasons it gets down to negative 60 oh, yeah, but as long yeah, as you prepare yeah. for it oh, yeah, i can get yeah. on a snow machine from my front porch and drive 10 minutes and be away from everybody huh. just that quick yeah i prepare for negative um, 60 by going to california yeah <laughs> that's exactly yeah <laughs> oh, uh, what's man. uh i don't know if you're a single or married man but what's like the lady situation oh it's pretty good up here for the fellas very good i i ended up marrying a, a UPIC woman which um Interestingly enough, high school or school didn't really teach us much about Alaska. I thought everybody was Asian back home. It turns out that there's quite a few uh, Alaska natives in Seattle, and I didn't realize it until I came up here and started meeting everybody. Oh, oh, and then you realize, oh, okay, that's, so there's Alaska natives yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I had no idea about Alaska. Like, I literally thought igloos were a thing, and, and they're not. It, you know, everybody's pretty modern up here, despite being in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Wait a minute, you guys got houses? One. <laughs> Where are all the igloos? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah look, no right. polar bears as pets, nothing like that. What about every, Santa? Yeah, yeah, Is Santa yeah. up there or what? Yeah. yeah. No, that's the other, that's the North Pole. But if you learn everything Santa about it, yeah, awesome. Yeah. He, he learned Santa everything by watching cartoons. <laughs> well, right on, Santa I, up here flies in a C-130, and he goes and we have these villages still, which are like basically modern day, like they started out as an ancient kind of village, literally a village. Um, and they're all over the place. The populations are like two, three hundred people in each one of these. And Santa flies in a C-130 to all these remote runways and visits the kids and brings toys. Oh, so that's that, that awesome. actually happens. That's a cool thing. <laughs> it literally happens. That's that actually that, that, so that, cool. That, that, they're, they're probably closer to the Santa Claus experience than anybody I know. Right. I mean, they got somebody that literally flies in, you know, in an air in an air vehicle and drops off toys like Santa. So, most importantly, what's your subway sandwich of choice? Oh, that's the important question. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be uh, the it's got to be the uh, cheese bread, which whichever herb and cheese yes. with the BNT double meat. Oh, man. The BMT gives me the poops, but I always get it at least once a year. Oh, yeah, right. It's so good. It's something about that salami, man. It's mm -hmm. right. it's so yeah. good, it's worth getting it, though. Yeah, there's a, it's uh, got the most meat. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's the ringing <laughs> endorsement right there. Up. Guys, yeah. if you ever get a chance to visit remote Alaska, come in the wintertime. It's cold, but it's worth it. You know, right. last night we had the most amazing northern lights. It was just all That's across cool. the sky. Yeah. They dance. It's beautiful. And then, right. you know, it's absolute solitude. And considering what's going on in the world right now, we don't have none of that up here. Well, well that makes sense. You've got nothing up there. That, that's <laughs> probably what it is. <laughs> Appreciate the call, Clyde. Do, do you have that? Like, there's a certain food that gets, that makes your stomach just doesn't sit with it, but you love it so much and it tastes so good that you're willing to deal with the, the, the upset so stomach? Yes. Well, I've got, acid, I've got acid like, reflux right now, so almost everything. Okay, because, like, yeah, salami yep. mm -hmm. kills me. But I love salami, and the BMT is one of my favorite sandwiches at Subway. But I'm like, all right, am I okay with, like, you know, it bothering my stomach for the next day? 
And there are times where I'm like, screw it. I just want it so bad I'm going to deal with it. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's with me and clam chowder. I love clam chowder, but really any cream-based soup mm-hmm. will just destroy me. I have oh, to stay at the sense. house for like the next like forever. But every once in a while, I got to go to Ivers and get the clam chowder, man. And then stay at the house forever. Basically, yes. Any, Vicky, anything? No, nothing for me. Uh, the closest would be when I, I I don't really drink wine. I drink basically juice. It's the the fruity wines like Moscato and Riesling, and I, that just messes me up. Like I'll have two glasses and I'll have a hangover, yeah. and it's it's BS because I can drink like six whiskeys and be fine. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, so you get massive headaches and stuff, massive mm-hmm. hangover, but you still do it anyway? I, yeah, I, yeah, I would. It's tasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Hey, to go back to the bug assault rifle, we're getting a lot of text messages. Oh, the assault, uh, the assault <laughs> gun. Yes. So since I had that bug assault rifle, and it's not much of a salt mess. My wife has claimed it, though, as hers because she kills spiders with it. I bought oh. one for my dad. He brings it camping and loves it from Brady. Hmm. Anyone hey, tried it on another human? Does it hurt? I would imagine if you can kill a spider with the darn thing. I was too drunk when we tried it, so I really can't remember if it <laughs> hurt or not. <laughs> Atta boy. Okay. Yeah, so it's the bug assault thing. It's the best thing ever. Nothing better than sniping a fly straight out of the air. Make sure to double tap bees. Oh. Yeah. Oh, bees will get pissed if you just miss and, like, wing them. <laughs> Rev, you just afraid of that bee because it's stinging you. Hell yeah! You know, you think they're all out to get you. Oh, here's another cool thing. I almost bought this because it did look really cool. Uh, this person says, my dad has the grilled cheese bags for the toaster and it works great. What's this now? It's just like a bag. It's almost like a wax paper typey looking bag thing. Oh, right. And you put your bread and you, like, you, you grab bread, put cheese in it. And you, you prepare for a grilled cheese, slide it in this bag, pop that in the toaster. The cheese doesn't drip into the toaster. It stays in the bag. Oh, that's right. We, we talked about that. Yeah. yeah. It looks pretty fantastic. I'm glad that it's got the seal of approval from one of I'm our listeners. I'm glad <laughs> that I don't have that because I don't need that in my life. What? Uh, grilled cheese is healthy. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah super bread and healthy. cheese, man. What's wrong with that? What could go wrong with bread and cheese? Let's throw a little <laughs> clam chowder in there and have a blast. Doesn't that look great. Right? You can put anything in the toaster with this. It looks like French fries. Oh, really? Your 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 Ooh. enemies? Who are my enemies? The toaster? Well, I'm saying because you put anything oh. in the toaster, can I put my enemies yeah, you in cut there? Cut them up small well, enough. I mean, that's a very cannibalistic way to look at things. Oh, I'm not going to toast them to eat them, just to get rid of them. Chicken fingers. Yum. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, interesting. Well, that's, uh, let's see, a toaster oven kind of takes place. Doesn't that toaster oven do the same thing? But you just, well, I guess well, you have you to don't have it. a toaster oven. All right. Or a well, convectional oven. Vicky, is, is, it, is it carbon neutral uh, if, I, if I use those bags? Sure. Okay, thanks. That works. Then. Ask Brian Castle. He's the guy who knows about things <laughs> that are like <laughs> for the environment. Okay, very good. It's like composting. <laughs> All right. Are you okay over there? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm great. Are you? I'm doing all right, actually. Super. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we got a big question speaking of Ryan Castle, and here it is. What do Ryan Castle and a college student have in common? I want to tell you at 949 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. And now... The Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a college student have in common? I won't be attending class in person anytime soon. Yeah, that's right. Also, I can make a killer spody. Oh, I miss those days. All the fruit, Why all the alcohol. Yeah, I just, I, you haven't been by my house to make them for me. I don't have a garbage pail big enough for it. We'll use your bathtub. Oh, oh. good idea. The one that we bathed Tatum in, that'd be weird. Oh, uh, poor only if she's in it. Drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Only if she's in it, Steve. Come on, will you? Come on. This is multi-purpose. This bathtub. One person says cake stands. Lots oh, yes. of cake stands. Yep. Steve is hooked up with both. He has. I don't know if I ever hooked up with Ryan. I mean, we've had nice nights, but nothing, nothing to. Oh, you know, you don't call anything. that a that one night winning? Nice nights. I mean, nice uh, nights of just drinking and eating meat. I don't know. I thought they meant more to Ryan, but thanks, thanks for breaking his heart. <laughs> and both are broke, according to Aaron from Everett. Hey, let me tell you about Ray. Ray is a genius of a 21-year-old and uh, was a student at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Mini last year. Uh, on April 17th, on August 20th, and on September 20th, uh, well, yeah, Ray decided, you know what? I have not done my homework, so I think what I'm going to do then is call in fake bomb threats on the campus. That'll, that'll get me out of it. Don't let anybody into that school, huh? Yeah. He used an app that blocks his phone number, so he thought that was enough. But, uh, yeah, you see, federal investigators, when they think there are bombs, they have ways around your dumb little app. And they found out who he was. And, yep. So he's uh, he's going to be sentenced this year. Looks like he's getting time. I guess that's what happens when you yeah, make three bombs for that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. 
College. Congrats, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Castle, he's got a 12 pack next. BJ and Miggs play of the day. Communication? I mean, I wish that happened so many times in my relationship where a woman would say, hey, dude, I want to be with you, but can you do this? And be like, mm-hmm. and of course, it was always tough for women to even communicate because that was a stigma. So we just got to talk, man. And or we need to go to the most romantic guy in the world and ask him how to do it. Me? Yeah. yeah you. I was, yeah. you know, I pointed to you, so I'm glad yes. you got the cue that it was you I was talking about. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. Can I leave things off of a bankruptcy, like my car? You have to list all of your assets and creditors when you file bankruptcy. So by you would have to tell the, the court and the trustee that you have the car or that you have a car loan. Uh, you could say that I want to keep my car and continue to make my payments on the car. Uh, but the, the court will need to know that you have a car and, and that may, you may have a payment on the car. So by by leaving it off the bankruptcy, if you mean that you cannot disclose it to the court, the answer to that is no, you must disclose it. However, that does not mean that you'll lose those assets. You'll be able to keep things like a car and a house in almost all cases, but you must disclose them to the court. Um, but you'll need to continue to make payments on a house or a car that you intend to keep. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.